Wonder is an interesting thing. Kids have loads of it. Yesterday, my son was eating. He picked up a cookie, and he was eating it by himself. And I welled up with pride. I was so proud of him. I should mention he's one and a half. <laughs> and, uh, and, I said, and I said, Alfred, good job, like this. And I guess he'd never seen a thumb stick out of a hand without the other fingers, <laughs> because he was fascinated. His jaw dropped, the cookie dropped, and he was fixated on my thumb. <laughs> now, I wish this worked as well on him as it does on you. It shouldn't, <laughs> because as you age, as you get older, you lose a bit of your wonder. Things don't surprise you anymore. I've seen more fantastic things on YouTube or in movies. The everyday world becomes a little bit more predictable, maybe even boring, and you forget that you were once fascinated by the simplest of things. So what I want to do today is start off with an experiment to incite a little bit of wonder about what I do. This is a classroom experiment. Uh, it's very popular in my classes. Uh, it consists of a copper tube. And through it, I'm going to drop two things. The first one is a steel bearing. Okay. I'm going to drop it through. Okay. So if you spent appreciable time on the planet Earth, you should not be surprised by what you just saw. Okay. <laughs> Gravity acted on this thing, and it sucked it down. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop a magnet, a permanent magnet through this. Now, do you think something different will happen? Well, yeah, of course. I mean, this would be the worst live demonstration if the exact same thing happened. Why would I do that to myself? Uh, so I'm going to drop it through and we'll check it out. Pretty cool, eh? So what we're going to do is we're going to repeat this experiment one more time, except this time, by the time the magnet makes its way down, I want you to let out a big gasp, OK? I mean, suffocate me. Just, just suck the oxygen out of this room, OK? Ready? All together, big gasp. One, two, three. <laughs> Thank you. And for all of you that, that didn't gasp, I understand you saw it on YouTube already. I get it. I get it. So what we saw there was a phenomenon known as induction, OK? Tethered to that magnet is an invisible magnetic field. And as that magnetic field plummets through that copper tube, it induces a circulating invisible electric field. And under the influence of that electric field, the electrons in that copper tube circulate, and they in turn generate another magnetic field that opposes that of the magnet and thus slows its descent through the tubing. This phenomenon illustrates that electricity and magnetism are fundamentally linked, and they're linked through invisible electric and magnetic fields. What's cool is that these fields don't need to be tethered to physical objects. You can have electric and magnetic fields without being tied to a tubing or a magnet, and they can move in space at the speed of light as a wave, coupled in both space and time. This electromagnetic wave describes a spectrum of phenomenon, uh, microwaves, x-rays, visible light. The only difference between these types of waves is their size, or we call it wavelength. The wavelength of microwaves is about centimeters, your size of your thumb. The wavelength of the light that enters your eye and that you, through which you see the world is about 100,000 times smaller. So the founder of, uh, the founder, one of the founding fathers of electromagnetism is, is this man. No, this is not Dracula. This is my hero, Michael Faraday. If a strangely sadistic person were to uh, force me to trade one of my appendages to meet a historical figure. Uh, the only person I'd be willing to make that trade for is Michael Faraday. And it's not because of his achievements that he's my hero. It's because of his life story. You see, Michael, we're, we're on a first name basis. Uh, <laughs> Michael didn't grow up wealthy. He was the son of a blacksmith, and he worked as a bookkeeper till he caught a break as an apprentice in a lab. He wasn't even well-educated. His math skills would barely rival that of a high schooler today. But what he did possess was a religious devotion to discovery. And what that did was it guided each and every single day of his life towards the pursuit of truth. His life's work is the foundation of electromagnetism. And his life story, I think, illustrates a very fundamental principle that I see everywhere. 
It's this. Even from humble beginnings, the accumulation of small effects, when guided by a strong purpose, can lead to enormous earth-shaking consequences. It's a theme that I like to live my life by. Um, it's also a theme that I see consistently in my research activity on light. Of course, the master of this concept is Mother Nature. You need only look at a butterfly wing to see this mastery in work. The colors of a butterfly wing result from a delicate hidden order in its microstructure. And if you had a sufficiently powerful microscope, you could zoom in and what you'd see are rows upon rows of scales delicately placed so as to refract, reflect, and scatter light to produce the brilliant colors that you see. It really is a symphony. Now, what's exciting is that we now have the ability to conduct our own symphony. The same technology that allows you to put computers in your pockets, which some of you may be rudely checking right now, I'm not sure, <laughs> allows us to build things on nanometer scales. Now, a nanometer is a billionth of a meter, and to put it in perspective, a billionth of a meter is about the ra same ratio as your height to the distance to the moon. It's really, really small. But with this tool, we can now engineer materials to interact with light in strange and interesting ways that open up new doors and challenge convention. So what I want to share with you today are two discoveries that I've been fortunate to be a part of, which start from humble beginnings, we start small, and we end up with consequences that may potentially be groundbreaking. The first example is this, uh, this glass slide right here. To the naked eye, nothing looks special about it. It looks like a yellow piece of glass. But if you zoom in on its microstructure, you'll find that that yellow film is made up of a series of tiny, thin layers of metal and glass. Now what we've done is we have engineered the specific type of metal and specific type of glass, and we've engineered their arrangement so that this layer possesses a very strange property. And it's this, whenever you put an object on one side of this layer, almost by magic, an image of that object will appear on the other side. Basically, it's like a lens, the same lens that you see in your glasses and in your cameras, except it's super thin and super flat. Uh, what I've shown here are two experiments that we've done. In the central column, we placed a cross on top of this layer. Uh, and here we placed a circle, and when we looked on the other side, voila, we see sharp, crisp images of these objects on the other side. What's interesting about this phenomenon is that it changes the way we think about light inside that microstructure. If we think of light as a wave, it behaves like all the waves that we're used to. It tends to spread out. And the only way to form a sharp image using this flat, thin layer is if somehow light inside that layer were converging rather than diverging. This idea describes what we know as a backwards wave. It's very counterintuitive, and you can visualize it by imagining ripples on a pond in which the ripples go toward the source rather than away from it. It's weird. We still don't fully understand why it is, why it is that way, but we do know that at least that visible light, the light that we see, the only way to get this effect is through careful combinations of metal and glass. The implications of this finding may have huge impacts on how we see small things. Right now, if we want to see small things, we use a microscope, and many of you may be already familiar with this. And what a microscope does is it uses curved lenses to generate magnified images of small things. But because it uses curved lenses, we're restricted to viewing an area that's basically a speck. So if you swap out that curved lens and threw in our flat, thin layer, you could potentially image sharp thing, small things, but over massive areas. The next thing I want to talk about are some of our discoveries about the pressure of light. Um, you all know that light carries energy. If you stick your hand out in the sun, you'll feel the warmth. That's the energy of light. But what you may not know is that light also exerts a minute pressure. 
When you step out in the sun, you are bathed by a very light push of light. It's very, very small, imperceptibly small, but it's there nonetheless. What we've done is we've engineered um, some devices that play some interesting tricks with light. And we started off with a really, really small cantilever. So imagine a really, really long spaghetti arm, and it's shown in this image right here. And at the end of that long spaghetti arm, we have made a platform. And on that platform, what we have done, if you zoom into the microstructure of this section, is we have laid down super thin layers of metal and dielectric, or glass. Very similar to the recipe we used for that flat lens before. This cantilever, by the way, is super, super floppy. If you even sneeze in the room with it, it may cause it to do this, just wobble uncontrollably at its natural resonance frequency. That's what we call it. Now, using this cantilever, we can measure the minute pressure of light. And this is how we do it. What we do is we direct a beam of light onto the cantilever head. And using a microscope, what we do is we zoom in to a section of its arm and watch as it wiggles under the pressure of light. The mechanical analogy is that you are pushing your, a large friend on a swing, except you are a light beam. How cool is that? The coolest analogy. And your friend is this cantilever. Now, at the beginning of our experiment, uh, unfortunately, your friend is massive, and, and you are frail. So at the beginning of the experiment, your pushes, your minute little pushes, don't do much. And that's why this cantilever isn't wobbling. But you are persistent, and you continue to apply your little pushes. And over time, what happens is your friend builds up large oscillations. And when you check, you see that you aren't actually pushing, you're actually pulling. This is an observation of an effect uh, known as tractor beaming. Um, we are seeing light pull rather than push. It is confusing it's, and very interesting because if we view, if we believe that light carries energy, then what Einstein tells us is that energy and mass are equivalent. So light should behave like other massive objects we know, like billiard balls. And like a billiard ball, we expect that the flow of energy and momentum go in the same direction. But the observation of tractor beaming seems to suggest that momentum can flow opposite to the direction of energy. It's still a mystery, and it continues to be a subject of my research. But nonetheless, it is fascinating and potentially game-changing. The potential applications of tractor beaming may be fantastic. If we had materials that could push and pull under the influence of light, you can imagine propulsionless space flight in which you're guided anywhere by the light of the stars. So what I've shown you today are two examples that illustrate the power of the small. How from small, humble beginnings, you can produce or build things of with dramatic consequences. And what's exciting in my research is that I think we're really at a threshold. We are just scratching the potential for what we can do with nanotechnology and light. And to end my talk, I'd like to conclude with a quote from William Yeats. The world is full of magical things, patiently waiting for our senses to grow stronger. I'd like to modify that one little bit. Indeed, the world is full of magical things. But I believe that their discovery requires not only that our senses grow stronger, but that our wonder remain childlike.